Hello friends, let's learn together. Today I'll be explaining the role of values in art, what they are and how to use them to improve your work. I'll also give a basic introduction of how to make and use value sketches. This tutorial is probably going to be the most useful for people who've been drawing or painting for a while, but I'll do my best to explain everything in a straightforward, accessible way so that anyone can follow along, regardless of experience. By understanding values, you can bring complex illustrations together into a clear, effective whole without having to put a limit on detail, variety or colour. It's one of the most important basic principles in art and value sketches are a fun, easy way to bring your craft to the next level. What are values? Values are a way to measure the amount of light and dark in a piece. Pure white has the highest value and pure black has the lowest. In between there's all the different shades of grey and all the colours of the rainbow. The way these values play off of each other, either contrasting or blending together, will tell the viewer where to look and what they're looking at. It's what gives the subjects their shapes and either separates them from each other or unites them. Without understanding values it's impossible to illustrate light and shadow effectively. You also risk making your composition look messy and confused in unintended ways. Values versus colours Values focus on light and dark, but that doesn't necessarily mean the same as black and white. Any colour you choose can be more light or more dark, and the contrast and value between it and all the other colours will be more important to the overall piece than the contrast between the colours themselves. Let's look at an example. If you know basic colour theory, you'll know that blue is the complementary, or opposite, colour of orange. That means that blue will appear more blue than ever when it appears right next to orange. But since contrasting colours don't necessarily have contrasting values, if the blue and the orange have the same values, if they're equally dark or equally light, neither one will stand out as strongly as they could. That's why planning out your illustration in terms of values before considering colour can save you a lot of time. Value grouping Value grouping is an effective way to add as many details to an illustration as you'd like, without making things look cluttered, confusing or distracting. It's one of the most simple and effective ways to create an illusion of depth, to differentiate clearly between foreground, middle ground and background, and to guide the viewer's eye to your intended focus. In this example, I want the character by the window, let's call them Connie, to be the star of the drawing. But I also want to fill Connie's room with knickknacks and decorations to give a sense of who they are and how they live. In the line sketch, the amount of detail in the foreground is chaotic and distracting. It's not very clear what's supposed to be important, and the viewer might look anywhere rather than at Connie. By using one value for the background, one for the middle ground, and one for the foreground, I can bring all of these details together into distinct groups. By using contrasting values, one very light and one very dark, I can make Connie's outline against the window stand out clearly. With a value somewhere in the middle between dark and light, the clutter around them seems less important by comparison. In other words, by using value grouping I can draw a picture of a mess without having the picture itself look messy. Grouping values like this won't always be helpful, of course, if the piece you're working on is meant to have many points of focus. Perhaps it's a lively scene and you'd like to let the viewer decide what they'd rather look at. You might decide to make different values throughout and use that sense of chaos to your advantage. After all, where's Wally wouldn't be much fun if we could spot Wally at a glance. Value sketches A value sketch is pretty much what it sounds like. It's the part of the planning stage of an illustration where you decide which values you're going to use. Value sketches give you a chance to experiment without risk. They should only take seconds to make, so it costs very little to try many different ideas before picking the one you like best. They'll also help you to choose the right colours if you're using any, and most importantly, they'll help you test if the overall composition is effective, not just in terms of values, but shapes and lines as well. To illustrate what I mean, I thought I'd show you how I make and use value sketches. So far this tutorial has mostly been me dumping information on you, and hopefully this section is when I bring it all together into some practical, clear advice. 
My process. I begin any illustration with some very small, very rough sketches, just to pin down my ideas. When I've decided how I want to arrange my subjects, I draw a second, slightly cleaner sketch that I could show to another person without having to explain to them what it's meant to depict. In this example, I want to draw a calm scene with two groups of people. The first is a couple embracing in the foreground. The second is a trio in the middle ground, enjoying a cup of tea. I want to draw a warm, overcast day, a wild, lush landscape and a barely hidden secret, the romance between the characters hiding underneath the trees. Mostly, I want an excuse to draw a lot of plants, because that's my favourite. If I started colouring now and picked my values without considering the overall composition, the strength and direction of the sunlight, and the story that I'm trying to tell, it might look something like this. The trunk of this tree would be dark, the flowers beneath it would be light. I could paint in shadows and highlights afterwards, but it's difficult for lighting to make a real impact if it's added as an afterthought. I started out with a fairly straightforward composition in my line sketch, and now if we look only at the values and the shapes that they form, it's almost impossible to make sense of this picture. That's a problem, because confusion was not what I was trying to convey. In fact, this illustration splits pretty neatly into three distinct areas, in this case foreground, middle ground and background. I want the two groups of people to be clearly separated, so the highest value contrast should be between foreground and middle ground. This is a calm scene with a strong but soft source of light, the sun, so no area will be very close to black or to white. Even if I'm pretty sure ahead of time of what I want to do, as I am in this example, I try to experiment with my value sketches, especially for more complex scenes. After all, there's more than one way to pet a cat, and obviously I want to find the very best one. The most obvious or conventional approach will probably be pretty effective, but not necessarily the most interesting. And sometimes I don't find a value sketch at all that works the way I want it to until I've gone back and started over with a new line composition entirely. Finding flaws. The original version of this tutorial used this sketch as an example. It depicts three humanoid characters in a panic and three snake-like creatures towering above them. It's supposed to be a scary scene with tension and the promise of action in the very next moment. The two groups are at odds and I think high contrast and values would be a good way to communicate that tension between opposite extremes. Contrast of any kind is often effective if you want to make an illustration look striking and immediate. But in this composition, the two groups are divided by the background. That means that the contrast between near black and near white is neutralized by a literal middle ground of grey. By making these value sketches, I've found a potential flaw in my design. That's exciting. It's helped me to pinpoint the most basic element of what I'm trying to portray, a threat. And it's given me a clear idea of how to portray it better. My next attempt might start out looking something like this. Now I have the contrasting values that I wanted right next to each other. There's also, I think, a clearer sense of scale. The overall composition is pretty conventional for other reasons. I'm sure you've seen many illustrations that look something like this, especially if you're a fan of high fantasy. But the values work, and there's nothing stopping me from making another attempt, and a fourth and a fifth, to be sure that I'm not settling for something safe at the expense of something more exciting. In fact, I should. I know I'd learn a lot, and even if I decided to come back to my first sketch in the end, time spent learning is never wasted. From grayscale to color. After I've made my value sketch, I make a color sketch based on my value sketch. Learning to see values in color can be a little tricky sometimes, but conscious practice makes it easier. Since I work mostly digitally these days using Photoshop, I have some shortcuts to help me too. By placing a layer on top of my illustration, filling it with white and changing the layer setting to color, I can instantly see a grayscale version and toggle this on and off as I go. For traditional art, I would take a few steps back from my work to view it at a distance, or look at it with my eyes half closed. That makes it easier to see the big shapes and contrasts underneath the smaller details. Choosing colours with their values in mind doesn't just help with value composition. In my experience, it's also made it much easier to think outside the box with my colours and find interesting, effective and appealing palettes. 
No rules, just write. When I wrote the first draft for this tutorial, I was tempted now and then to make broad statements on what to do and what not to do. I could have said that high contrast should always be reserved for the person or object that's the most important in your piece, and that the space they inhabit should take the back seat. I could even have attached values to the values, if you'll forgive the pun, by recommending light compositions for a quote-unquote happy piece, or dark if you're going for a somber, but simplifications like that aren't helpful, because they're never true. The meaning of almost anything in a drawing depends on the context around it. The person looking at it will make their own associations too. Darkness will probably always mean darkness, but whether that darkness is inviting, rich, comforting, cold, dangerous or thrilling depends on what's around it or inside of it. High contrast will draw the eye, but it's not always helpful to shine a spotlight on the point you're trying to make. Forcing the viewer to linger and search is its own kind of storytelling. What I'm trying to say is that there isn't really a right or a wrong way to use values, besides what's wrong or right for your vision. In my opinion, a good art tutorial should teach you new ways to problem solve. It shouldn't try to tell you what the solution is. Now, of course, I couldn't say whether this is a good art tutorial or not. I'll leave that for you to decide. If value composition is new to you, I encourage you to take some time to experiment with them. Try to use them to portray a mood energy, loneliness, discovery. Use them to capture movement and space. Ignore everything else for a while. Set aside any pressure you might feel to create something beautiful or impressive and just practice making value compositions that really work. Look at what other people are doing. Collect some examples you like. Make some studies. Think about what appeals to you and why. Talk about values with an art friend or just out loud to yourself. Thinking works so differently when you're forced to put your thoughts into words. Just writing and rewriting this tutorial has made things clear to me that were a little confusing before, and I obviously already felt confident enough on the topic to try to tell you how things really are. To wrap it up, this is the first video tutorial I've ever recorded, and I'm really excited to hear what you think of it. Did you learn anything new from this guide? Was anything unclear? Is there anything about values that I could explain better? Do you have a favorite example of a value composition you'd like to share with me? I'm always looking for inspiration. And what should my next art tutorial be about? Please let me know in the comments. As you can see, this is a very young channel. Likes, comments and subscriptions are more helpful than I could ever express. And by clicking two buttons, you'll put a smile on my face for a whole week. This video is brought to you by the following heroes who support me on Patreon. Join them and you can get early access to every new video, drawing and tutorial that I create, and a bunch of other fun perks. Scroll down to the description to find links to all my other social media platforms. The gorgeous music you've been listening to was arranged, performed and recorded by my talented, skilled and beautiful brother Felix Blücher. Until next time, I wish you the very best of luck with your art adventure. Thank you for learning with me.